Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, this is the main star of the show, um, Shackleton. He's quite content tonight. It's actually quite funny because, you know, if I don't do a video for a while, he actually comes and uh, as soon as I come into this room, he jumps up on the chair, and sometimes he sits there and waits for me. Um, look at the camera, kitty cat. Um, anyway, in this video, I want to talk all about methane because there's been a lot of uh, recent reports in the last few days about huge methane emissions coming um, up from the ocean floor in an area of the East Siberian shelf and um, so what I'll do is I'll show you um, what the water temperatures are there and they're elevated there's temperature anomalies in that region there's um, air temperature is also elevated in that region. And the research ship, the um, Keldish, um, was actually the ship that was used in the filming of the Titanic movie. So that's the research ship that is out there. And they've been monitoring methane on the, in the water column, in the seafloor sediments. Um, in the air above and they found this region where, where the stuff is basically just boiling you know up through the water and just coming up into the atmosphere and the levels that they measured were actually as high as 16 parts per million. Now when we talk about methane we we're normally talking about the part per billion level so it's about you know some areas are up to you know, it's 1880, 1900, 2000 um, parts per billion, which is about two parts per million. So now they're measuring up to 16 uh, parts per billion. So it's nine times higher than the average levels. And uh, they haven't seen this before. So there's definitely, you know, they're catching the methane in buckets. But anyway, let's look at the, some of the details as to what's happening, where and why. Okay, so this is a Google Earth. If you, if you just search for Google Earth and search for Bennett Island, okay, this is the area up here. This is the Eastern Siberian uh, shelf, basically, you know, very, very shallow continental shelf. And, um, you know, the sea ice basically has retreated into this region. So this is most, this is open water for good, good chunks of the year, most of the year, because the ice, you know, um, doesn't cover it. And, and, and just in the, um, you know, the depths of winter. Okay, so this is my website. Um, have a look. Um, if you're not familiar with it, just Google paulbeckwith.net. Please consider uh, donating to support my videos. I've got well over 500 videos, probably approaching 600 videos, all on abrupt climate change. You know what's what it's doing. You know projections as to what I think is going to happen. You know in the near term, mid term, far term future. Um, of course, you know the Arctic is a big focus because that's where you know the warming is is greatest. But I talk about the overall climate system. And uh, there, we are getting more and more traction. So this last post, um, Greta Thunberg, um, you know, a year ago she was unknown. So in a year, you know, she started a movement, you know, but also the weather is going crazy. Climate is going crazy. Things are accelerating, always going much faster than expected. So the world, the public is starting to wake up. The politicians still haven't, um, still are not acting anywhere near uh, with the level um, of, of emergency that we, we expect that they, that they need to, you know, we need to, the world needs to wake up quickly and, and get going on climate action. So September 27th, I went on a, um, I went on a climate strike for Friday's March in Ottawa. We had, I don't know, 10, 20,000 people, you know, who knows, big, huge crowds. Montreal, 
um, which is where Greta went had half a million. And the numbers have, you know, uh, basically on September 20th, they were about 4 million globally. And September 27th, those numbers were as high as I've heard uh, reports up to 9 billion, 9 billion, <laughs> 9 million people, you know, on those marches. So, you know, people are starting to get very concerned. Um, okay, so on Twitter, if you just look at the hashtag, hashtag methane, um, then you can come across all of these, and we're looking at the top articles. You can see, you know, boiling with methane, truly terrifying sign of climate change under the Arctic Ocean. So there is a lot of organic material in the, what was frozen permafrost, just under the seafloor, in the seafloor sediments uh, deep down. And because of the ocean temperatures being much warmer, you know, less and less sea ice covering regions, the water starts to thaw, the warm water starts to thaw the permafrost. So the organic matter then goes from frozen to thawed and the bacteria start decomposing it and you get methane bubbling up from, from the surface. Um, here's another article that scientists discover the sea boiling with methane in Siberia. So this is just uh, from, uh, this, this is just an article that in Global News, uh, just from today, October 10th. Um, so, you know, it's taken a few days, but the mainstream media is reporting it. Here we, we get some other methane, uh, you know, images. So there's lots and lots of articles. And, uh, you know, one thing, um, you know, the meth, I'll talk about the global uh, methane levels, uh, but, but fracking is said to be, you know, a, a bigger and bigger part. Um, but the, of course, the risk is that the uh, methane coming from the um, environment um, exceeds, will, will soon exceed all of the methane coming from human emissions. Okay, so here's this article, you know, Newsweek uh, today. Today, uh, sea boiling with methane discovered in Siberia. No one has ever recorded anything like this before. Okay, so, you know, the area of the sea is boiling with methane. Bubbles could be scooped from the water with buckets. Okay, they're calling it a methane fountain, unlike anything they've seen before concentrations of the gas six to seven times higher than the global average. And actually, you know, uh, when I dug deeper, it was actually nine times higher in some regions, 16 parts per million in the air above the water. So Igor Semelitov has been on numerous uh, expeditions, you know, off, off uh, Russia into the ocean. And so he's been talking about this stuff for years, so of course permafrost is frozen ground, permanently frozen, some cases for up to 10,000 years, but the water is warming, it's in the sediments, seafloor sediments, the water is shallow, most of the eastern Siberian uh, shelf is, you know, less than 50 meters deep, 50 to 100 meters deep, and the water is much, much warmer and it's sawing the, the uh, sediments. Okay, it's also happening on land, um, and uh, the ground was actually heaving. These guys are walking on the ground and the ground's actually heaving. You can have a look at that video. Um, so Bennett Island is the area where samples of seawater and sediments were taken and a really in large increase in the concentration of methane. So an area of four to five square meters was boiling with methane bubbles, nine times higher than global average concentrations. So they, the team took samples in the water column, in the air above, in the sediments. Um, they measured the state of the permafrost in the sediments. Um, and again, it's in this part here, Bennett Island. <clears throat> so if we look at what the sea ice is, this is, you can just Google Arctic sea ice graphs and you get, this is what we, where we are October 10th. Um, I, op I looked at Earth Null School and I picked the ocean and the sea surface temperature anomaly. This is the region here. So the anomaly is about 3.4 degrees Celsius. Um, this was back 
September, I cycled back a few, uh, to, to near where the sea ice was a minimum, and you could see this. Um, so this is the sea surface temperature anomaly. And if we go to um, the uh, sea surface temperature, okay, 3.3 degrees Celsius, okay. Uh, so the anomaly, you know, clearly it was close to zero you know, uh, before, and it's 3.3 degrees uh, warmer. And if we go to um, the, if we look at the air at the surface and the temperature, uh, you know, back, um, you know, in, in, in sort of the, towards the end of September, you know, you can see this, the green areas are, are above zero. So the air temperature at the surface is above zero and it's the, the water is warmer than normal, so the, the water temperature anomaly of about 3.4 degrees translates to a temperature at the surface anomaly, 2.1 degrees or so. And you can look at how this is changing. You can go back a day, go back. Um, now this stuff is not sampled, you know, every single day. Well, this one is, the air temperature is, but the water isn't. So you can see how the temperature fluctuates from day to day, so there's this area you know, with elevated temperature, and that's where the methane was measured. Um, clicking on some of the links, this is a Russian article, and I translated it. Um, I just click translate, um, and it talks about some of the details. The translations aren't great, but they they measured they used uh, sound waves to do profiling of the sediments on the bottom th through the different layers. Um, they measured the permafrost by measuring the electrical resistance. Um, and if it's frozen, um, it's mostly an insulator. And as it thaws out um, and there's water, um, seawater, then it becomes a conductor. So they can measure you know, the presence or absence of the permafrost by you know, uh, electrical resistance. They measured samples of seawater from different uh, depths, bottom sediments, suspensions, etc. And uh, they basically, this is the most powerful, it should be seep, the translation says sip, um, an increase in methane concentration in air up to 16 parts per million, which is nine times more than the planetary average. Nobody has measured this before, um, as high as this. Um, this is the boat the uh, Keldish, okay? And this is a scene from Titanic, um, James Cameron's uh, Titanic movie. You know, we have Kate Winslet playing Rose and we have Leonardo DiCaprio playing Jack. You know, they're the, they're the two main characters in the movie. You know, the, 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 the love, uh, you know, um, basically the uh, love, love connection in the movie. You know, and, uh, you know, the boat here was actually the one that they used and the submersibles on the boat, the Mir 1 and the Mir 2 submersibles. These are basically, you know, on, on the ship and so they can send these down and, and do the, the measurements and so on. Okay, so it's the same ship. So it was used for filming the Titanic and now it finds, uh, you know, record amounts of methane coming up from the Eastern Siberian Arctic shelf. So here's some more articles, uh, you know, much the same sort of thing. Um, the Moscow Times, boiling, boiling with methane coming up. Um, Similitov Simil has been in, on 45 Arctic expeditions. So, you know, Peter Wadhams has, has been on all these numbers, you know, huge numbers of expeditions to the Arctic to look at sea ice. Similitov has done this to look at methane. Um, and lots of researchers were involved in this project. And let's have a look at some of the um, information on, on uh, okay, so more stuff on methane. But the key things I want to show you is the global warming potential of methane here. Or sorry, this is the methane growth in parts per billion per year. And you can see the curve flattens off and starts to increase at higher and higher rates. Okay, so that you can see the curve here. Um, 